I'm a believer in AI taking away our stupid work. For example, serving ad hoc data requests for business users. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to build a text to SQL agent that will be querying a database for you using AWS Bedrock. Let's get right into it. Simply visually, a big part of this architecture is the Streamlit app, which is the UI and the interface between the user. Let's see what happens with the user request once it's passed to the Streamlit app. And under the hood for our solution that we're looking at today, uh, the user prompt or the user input goes to the Bedrock agent. Next, the Bedrock agent decides which action it can undertake to serve this uh, user request best. So in our scenario, the Bedrock agent has only one tool, and that is this uh, text to SQL kind of uh, lambda. Uh, there is this interface uh, API schema between Bedrock agent and the Lambda. We'll look into that in more details in a second. Basically, then the request is routed to the action group, to the Bedrock action group, which is just a Lambda function. A Lambda function that has three inputs. One input is the user input itself. The second input the examples of the queries that we provide so for to provide for the few short prompting and third input is the tables metadata which actually gets vectorized or embedded and with those three inputs uh, the lambda function generates a final prompt right and there are like multiple round trips to several foundational models so for example for picking the most relevant query examples or the most relevant tables we'll be using um, a model for embeddings and then once we have the final prompt with these three inputs we'll send that prompt to the foundation model to generate the sql query and once we have the sql query that query will be sent to athena will retrieve the data set back and then we'll call the foundational model once again to kind of make sense of the data set so that when we present it to the user it's in the conversational style right and that's why we have the data set here and then the process result here and the bedrock agent gets the process result and then returns it back to the user so this is the high level architecture that we're working with today before we get to querying structured data, let's do a quick recap of what Bedrock Agent is. So if you click through to your agent, you'll see that there is not much to it. So it's just an abstraction. However, this abstraction has capabilities. To see the capabilities that this abstraction has, you go and click this Edit an Agent Builder, specifics of your foundation model, and then comes the important bit, so the action groups and the knowledge bases. And end effect, your knowledge bases or the agent's capability of querying knowledge bases is also kind of like an action group. So you can think of them as kind of the same animal. Guardrails and advanced prompts. So we'll, we'll look into these prompts a bit later in the video. But here we're going to be querying our structured data with this action group. What action group is, is simply a lambda function that Bedrock agent decides to execute if the user prompts seems to fit this Lambda function. The only additional function that this agent abstraction has is that it has these pre-processing, orchestration, and post-processing, well, also knowledge base uh, response generation steps. Uh, so they are already pre-programmed for you. You can override them and you can also override parsing steps in between. That's pretty much it for the structure of the Bedrock agent. Now I suggest we proceed to looking at our data source. This is the AdventureWorks sample database that comes with SQL Server. This is how the tables are connected. So we have customers that purchase products from employees and that is tracked within an order table. Products are supplied by vendors and then products belong to subcategories and subcategories make up categories. So that's the structure, all of that sits 
in the glue catalog, CSV files with the schemas defined on top, and you, you could take a look at the data. It's pretty straightforward. Um, IDs, first name, last names, orders. All of that gives us plenty of space to kind of explore the, the agent capabilities. And we're going to be connecting through Athena, so the same kind of interface I'm using right now. Now let me give you an overview of what's happening in this Lambda function. So all this folder is our Lambda function, and the entry point is index. Uh, the event from Bedrock comes in, we parse out the user input from it, and we pass it over to this query engine. I'll explain in a second how it works. Basically, the magic happens there using llama index under the hood. Llama index uses Langchain, all of that. Uh, we get the response and we return the response back to the user. Simple as that. So the Lambda kind of high level logic is very simple. Now let's take a look at what's happening in the query engine. Uh, I'll go top to bottom. Uh, so first we connect to Athena with a SQL Alchemy, simple as that. Then these two functions, they help us with retrieving the most relevant examples of queries that we can provide to our agent. Right now this is empty, uh, but it proves very helpful in kind of close to production settings to, to provide questions that you expect to be asked by the user. And then the, the exact queries that need to be run on your specific data set to answer those questions. The examples that are most relevant to your user input are used for a few short prompting downstreams. And that's why it's so important. And you can take a look at my latest video and I explain where this kind of few short prompting and the relevant examples come into play in this entire text to SQL game. Um, and I'll explain the exact details of what's happening here in the next video. Anyways, these two methods, they pull out the most relevant examples of the queries to, to make a use of them later on in the final prompt. And here's where this creating the actual querying engine happens. This model is just for embedding stuff, and we need embedding stuff to compare the similarity, actually, also for this few shot prompting, but not only also for comparing the relevance of a given table to answer our user prompt. So this is where we get this few shot retriever of our examples. This is the prompt template. This is how our kind of final prompt will look like. So a bulk of kind of boilerplate explaining the agent what it should do. Now what happens later for each of the tables that we identified as relevant will pull out a schema and that will be pasted here. Right? And the schema includes kind of table name, table description, column descriptions, column types, all of that. Then our few short examples, they will go here. And then at the very end, the user question comes in here. Uh, and by the way, this table details is also a kind of extra step that you could explain your business logic here. If I'm not mistaking these table details. Okay, they used down the road when we're fetching the schema. Uh, okay, so this is our prompt. And uh, then we populate there's few short examples here. Um, then moving on, we create connection to Athena. We connect to the database. And by the way, all of that is done with Llama index. So 99% is done with Llama index. And you should also understand, uh, yes, it's a library but it also uses Langchain under the hood. So it's all really messed up, to be honest. Uh, okay, so connecting the database, connecting to our actual um, foundation model that we're gonna be making use of. We're gonna be using Claude 3 for this tutorial, although 3.5 is the latest one. 
but I'm just having problems with enabling this for my account. Um, now all of this code generates llama index, which is made up of our table definitions. Right under the hood, this SQL table retriever query engine will be comparing. So this is our table definitions. It will be comparing the most fitting tables to answer our query. And here we say to pull up five most suitable tables. Uh, this is our final prompt that we defined here and populated it with few short examples and the schema here. And then the last bit is this response synthesis prompt. Um, basically, this response synthesis prompt says, hey, okay, I received a bunch of data as a result of your SQL query. Now kind of make it human understandable so we can reason about it. We don't want to return this just numbers. We want to, to give a nice answer as, as if you were talking to a human. That's it. That's all we we'll do in our lambda function again there is like this helper csv will give uh, pairs of questions and expected queries this is the entry point this is where we store kind of our descriptions of our tables something specific so for example here i just couldn't make it not use vendor product table or the vendor product table if you look at it all it does uh, basically, it's not even here, but it connects a vendor and a product. It's many-to-many -many resolver, but it kept using it. So I, I told this thing, hey, only use this table if you need to join to vendors. And that helped. And it stopped making use of it every single time. So that's our Lambda. Again, deployment is not part of this video. One more thing about our Lambda that I almost forgot to mention. In our architecture, there is this API schema. So our Lambda is presented to the Bedrock agent as an, one of the API endpoints. Uh, and we're providing our agent with this API schema. So here separately, we have this action mapping schema that maps all available kind of end, API endpoints. And this is the endpoint, which if the Bedrock agent decides to call it, gets this call gets routed to our lambda and here in our lambda you can see that we're actually checking which kind of api path this call is targeted towards and if it's the query db we'll take it right we can we can play with this relationship of kind of api endpoints and lambda functions that's also just yet another element in our architecture now that you know how this lambda function looks like under the hood the high level we could give it a spin and, and ask our agent a question or two to see how it works let's maximize the test window first and see how our schema looks once again let's ask for top three most popular categories it will make our agent go the entire way from orders to the categories and also maybe pull up the numbers for us as well uh, what's what are the top most popular categories based on the number of orders thing to note is that I'm being in intentionally specific how exactly about how exactly the agent needs to judge the popularity of the category. Because we didn't do any fine tuning, we didn't give it any kind of few short prompting examples. We want to be as specific as possible. Uh, here we go, five most popular categories. And now we will we'll dive a little bit deeper, not too deep. Again, diving deeper is for the next video. But I'll show just a few pieces of how this kind of solution came to be. 
first we'll look at these two tracing steps. If you parse all of this, you will see that basically uh, Bedrock is saying that, hey, you have different function calls, and then it lists tools available. Uh, and if you remember, our tool is called Query Structure Data. That's our Lambda. And this is the API path. So that's how it called the, the Lambda. Uh, and then here, I think it's, it's the repetition. But here we can also see that the actual SQL query that the agent executed for us. A lot happened here. I don't want to go into details, but let's... Let's highlight the final query that the agent generated. It's over here. That's the final query. And if we just paste it in here. Okay, let's see what we have. Um, orders. Join to product. Let's double check if that makes sense. Orders join to products, correct. Products join to subcategories and subcategories join to categories. Yeah, that looks about right. Uh, we can also double check at the these numbers by running the same query against Athena. Let's do that real quickly. Okay, bikes, components, clothing, accessories. Nice, components, clothing, accessories. Yep, the results are correct. And right, so those are the correct results. But as you can see, it didn't just spit out a table. It reasoned. But based on the query results, these are the, the most popular categories. That's because of that second prompt that process the, the, the data set for us and here is the final response. Now that we tested it, I'll run exactly the same but now in a Streamlit app. So this is how your kind of final agent would look like. Um, I'll paste the exact same question we used here. I'm, I'm not explaining how the query works, just want to show you how the final product would look like. If you have any specific technical questions, I'm glad to answer them, but I'm just not doing that on, on YouTube. Feel free to subscribe to my Patreon channel. Uh, I'll gladly provide you with uh, guidance for your specific questions. Also, in this video, I'm showing how to build this exact Streamlit UA, which is super easy. It's exactly the same question. And here just also parses out the query for us, it's just convenient. That's that. Hope it was helpful, interesting. Let me know what else you would like me to explore. Have a great day.